So the first thing we want to talk about with a UID label, or IUID compliance, MIL standard 130, uh, the first thing is the foundation of the label, which is the data. And the data would be your page code and serial number if we're talking about a construct one formatted label. If we're talking about a construct two formatted label, we'd be talking about data made up of the cage code part number and serial number. Getting back to the construct one format, obviously you're gonna be serialized at the enterprise level, which is usually the cage code. In some occasions it could be a DUNS number, but for the majority of the time, it's the cage code that's traditionally used. In construct two, obviously we're gonna be serialized at the part number level. When we're talking about the data, your part number and serial number is the acceptable or compliant data that can be used can be made up of characters that are either alpha or numeric. You can also use either a dash or a forward slash. If your part or serial number is made up of any other type of character, a pound sign, an ampersand, even a space, uh, those are all considered non-compliant and cannot be used when creating that unique identifier. If you run into that situation, you basically have two options. You can either remove the non-compliant character altogether, or you can replace it with a compliant character. And what is typically done is the non-compliant character is removed and it's replaced with the dash, mainly because let's take the part number, for example. Your business may have all your part numbers using 10 characters. You may want to keep that number of characters for all your part numbers if you have to remove a non-compliant character. Otherwise, just putting in that dash keeps you in compliance and is able to, and we're able to create a fully compliant UID label. Now, once you've got the data all set, the next part is to choose a type of material and printing method that's conducive to the environmental conditions that these labels are going to be exposed to. So it's very important to know. Is the asset that you're going to mark, is it going to be indoors? Is it going to be outdoors where it could be exposed to UV rays from the sun? Is it going to be exposed to any type of harsh chemicals, extreme temperature, thermal shock? These are all types of characteristics that need to be considered when determining the proper material and marking method to be used that's going to be placed on the label, which will then, of course, be placed on the asset. And as Sharif mentioned earlier, this label is meant to last for the entire life cycle of the asset that's being marked. So not only is the material important, but the print method, the marking method is just as important. For example, let's take the examples that we have here. Down the bottom left, you'll see the material we list here is polyester, one of the more popular material uh, materials that is used to create UID labels. This has a very low wear and tear the print method has a thermal transfer marking method, and it's generally used for electronics, let's call it laptops, any type of electronic equipment. And it's generally used in an office or warehouse environment indoors, not exposed to any type of UV exposure. Metalized polyester has a little bit more of a durability factor. Also, however, it uses the same print method, which is thermal transfer. And generally, metalized polyester is used for either powder-coated surfaces or low-surface energy plastics. Both of these labels, again, use the same print method, thermal transfer. What you don't want to do is take these types of print methods and materials and use them for outdoor assets. This type of print method will be subject to a fading process if it's exposed to any UV rays from the sun. If that happens, eventually there'll be enough fading that will occur where that unique identifier, that 2D data matrix barcode that you see listed below in the examples of labels that we're showing here, it will fade enough where it will no longer be readable. Again, it has to last for the life of the asset and be readable for the life of the asset. So again, that print method is very, very important. Now, if you do have assets that are going to be exposed to the outdoors or in a more ruggedized environment, at the very least, you want to step up to a polyacrylic material. Polyacrylic material is probably the most popular material and marking method in terms of a laser etched marking method that is used on polyacrylic. It gives you the durability that you need for outdoor exposure to the sun, UV rays, uh, any type of rough industrial environment, small arms, any type of weapon system. 
engines, oils perhaps are splashing on against the asset, uh, marine equipment, salt water splashing. These are all types of situations that can corrode the material. That's why the polyacrylic, that's the medium to high wear and tear that you're going to need to handle those type of conditions. And then the most challenging environment, let's take aerospace vehicles, uh, engines, heavy outside uses, 24-7 uh, outdoor exposure, uh, or if it's in an indoor environment that's exposed to very harsh acidic chemical, something that could really do damage to the label, you want to step up to a photo etched aluminum. That is your most durable material that's available with using UID compliance. And the print method is a metal photo process where the printing method, it's embedded in the anodic layer of the metal, which is completely sealed and completely protected against any type of harsh chemical, uh, extreme temperature conditions. The photo etched aluminum material can handle temperatures as much as 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and of course, with it being fully protected, you don't have any issue again from any fading. So when determining the material in print method, just to summarize real quick, know the environmental conditions that it's going to be exposed to. And then you can make a determination, or if you decide to outsource your labels, your vendor will be able to recommend to you the best material and marketing method suitable for that environment and to keep you in compliance. Key point to remember here is for the entire life cycle of your asset.